We have a new number one in the transfer portal rankings, at least as far as uh, transfer recruiting goes. And Lane Kiffin is the portal king. Did you see what he shared on Twitter on Tuesday, on Monday, whatever it was? Yeah, any anybody who wants to openly and like knowingly compare themselves to Joey Exotic, <laughs> they, like I like Lane and I like Lane's antics, and you know this, you know how much of a fan of his oh, I yeah. am. Yeah, <laughs> um, I that listen, he makes fun of Brian Kelly for being cringe. That's pretty cringe, dude. It's uh, it's definitely that. It is definitely that. Um, he all right. So here is what they have done. And I'm, I'm just going to go through some of them. Uh, they got Ladarius Tennyson, a safety from Auburn. They got uh, Jordan Watkins, who's a wide receiver from Louisville. Uh, they got Mason Brooks, who is a four-star offensive tackle out of Western Kentucky. Ishim Young, three-star safety out of Iowa State. And then most recently, and the biggest ones here, uh, they have picked up Jackson Dart, who we talked about on the show, I believe, last week. Uh, the yep. USC quarterback, that's the big one. He's a five-star. I think he was number three in the transfer portal, maybe number two, if I remember right. Uh, Michael Trigg, who's a four-star tight end from USC. They also got J.J. Pegas, Pegwis, who's a four-star tight end out of Auburn. And they just picked up Jared Ivey, who's a four-star edge rusher out of Georgia Tech, who, I mean, is a, a top 20 kind of guy. This is, Lane Kiffin is basically rebuilding Ole Miss. This is not uh, reloading. This, or sorry, excuse me. He's reloading Ole Miss, not rebuilding. Uh, this is not something that we are used to seeing from Oxford. What what Lane Kiffin is doing right now? They lost the defensive coordinator. They lost the offensive coordinator. They lost the possible first round NFL draft pick quarterback. They lost both of their starting running backs, and yet they also brought in Zach Evans, who's a five star running back out of TCU. Like what they have done so far. I, this is the SEC West is just brutal because Ole Miss, for the majority of the past decade, two decades, whatever, is supposed to be the also ran in this division. You have already got Alabama and Texas A and M and LSU and Auburn, and now you've got Mississippi State giving people fights. You got Arkansas giving people fights, and not just fights, but like these are teams and coaches and programs that believe that they should be going to Atlanta as well. This is a deep, deep division, probably the best in all of college football, and Ole Miss is is continuing to do crazy things. At, we've talked about Lane maybe not wanting to be there, but just because he doesn't want to be there doesn't mean he's not going to do the job well. He is no, doing no, a killer he's doing, job. This, is, this shows growth, and this shows maturity, and this shows uh, you know the ability to solve problems. Okay? Oh, yes. They didn't recruit very well. And they don't have a lot of talent, but the transfer portal helps with that. That I I know that everyone sees, you know, a, a star player leave an Ohio State and go to Alabama. And you just say, oh, well, the, thanks for the transfer portal. Alabama's just going to get better. Well, it's you not know, just Alabama. I, it's not just <laughs> Alabama. Like Ole Miss is, is significantly better today than they were yesterday. Yeah. Um, and, but the and same it, thing helped with LSU, of, right? So LSU well, with Brian Kelly and USC, who is now number three in the portal, but it'll probably be number one if Caleb Williams picks. But regardless, like new coaches that come in, whether it's second, third year, whatever, you can rebuild. We saw it with Mel Tucker last Mel year. Mel Tucker. That's yeah. the guy you point to. That's the first person that said this. Th we thought they had no chance because they had no talent. We knew yeah. the amount of talent they had. We didn't pay attention to all the transfers that they brought in because we, for decades, worked under the premise that transfers just aren't going to win anything for you, okay? Yeah. There's a reason they were transferring. And then we saw Joe Burrow, and then we saw Justin Fields, and we've we've seen these guys take over and, and be dominant. And so, you know, it, it, it's just one of those things where it can solve a lot of problems fast. What it's going to do it's going to shorten that lease on coaching jobs. So oh, yes. these coaches, these coaches are getting bigger, longer contracts. Now we talked about that. The contracts are getting blown through the roof. They're no longer four year deals. They, and they didn't bump from four to six year deals. They went from four to eight or four to 10. Okay. And, and that's, that's where we're at now. But the expectation is for you to win, maybe not year one, but by year two, we're, we're competing. 
And yeah. with the transfer portal, there's no reason we shouldn't be. Agreed. And and it's not just these big name programs that I've brought up with Ole Miss and LSU and USC. Uh, we saw the same thing with Western Kentucky, where the offense had completely tailored off, and the transfer portal allowed them to bring in an offensive coordinator from the FCS level and right. also bring his quarterback and like three of the receivers along with him and a couple of offensive linemen. Like you can do that. We just saw Jake Dickert, the head coach at Washington State, do that with Incarnate Words offensive coordinator and their quarterback Cam Ward, who had, nobody really knew a lot about him early on, and we got one year of him, and everybody thinks he is going to be an absolute superstar. So you find a way to kind of rebuild your offense that way. There are ways that you can completely flip one side of the ball or the other, or both sides, as we saw with Michigan yep. State. You can find a way to do it, and Ole Miss is certainly taking advantage of that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.